Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're diving into Central Park, Manhattan's green oasis. Imagine strolling through lush meadows, the city's noise fading, replaced by rustling leaves and chirping birds. Section 2, A Green Dream, The Visionaries Behind the Park. Historical expert, enter Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vox, who envisioned a massive public park in Manhattan. They imagined meadows, winding paths and picturesque bridges, creating a tranquil escape from the city's grit. Central Park is a testament to their visionary design and belief in public green spaces. Section 3, More Than Just a Pretty Face, Unveiling the Layers of Central Park. We'll explore its iconic landmarks, hidden gems, and the legacy of Seneca Village, a thriving African-American community demolished for the park. Get ready to discover the good, the bad, and everything in between about Central Park. Frederick Law Olmsted and Calvert Vokes were visionaries who created an immersive experience. They designed winding paths, picturesque bridges, and varied spaces for different needs. Bethesda Terrace became the park's social heart, a place for people watching and public gatherings. Let's appreciate Central Park's architectural gems, like the Bethesda Fountain and Bow Bridge. These landmarks are more than just pretty structures. They tell stories of ambition and innovation. They represent the dedication of skilled artisans and the belief in public art and architecture. Let's trade in the honking horns for Central Park's natural beauty. Picture strolling through the ramble, a labyrinth of winding paths and hidden groves. Central Park's natural beauty transports you offering a haven for wildlife and a symphony of birdsong. Central Park is a tapestry of diverse landscapes, each with its own character. From the sheep meadow to the ramble and the conservatory garden, there's something for everyone. Central Park's natural beauty creates a sense of place, a refuge from the city's energy. Section 3. Get your green on recreation and relaxation for every season. Central Park offers endless recreational activities from running paths to ice skating at Woolman Rink. It's also the perfect place to unwind with picnics, rowboats, and quiet moments under a tree. Section 4. Beyond the Carousel. Unveiling Central Park's Hidden Natural Gems. Discover the Hallett Nature Sanctuary, the North Woods, and the Turtle Pond. Venture off the main path to explore the park's lesser-known corners and hidden treasures. Central Park is a celebrity in its own right, featured in countless movies and TV shows. From When Harry Met Sally to Friends, the park has provided the backdrop for iconic moments. Central Park adds whimsy, romance, and comedic chaos to our favorite series. Now, Central Park isn't just a pretty face for the cameras. It's a living, breathing cultural hub where art, music, and performance create unforgettable experiences. Take Summer Stage, for instance. For over three decades, this free outdoor concert series has brought big names in music to Central Park's Rumsey Playfield. And then there's Shakespeare in the Park, a beloved tradition entertaining audiences for over 60 years. The Delacorte Theatre transforms into an open-air amphitheatre for free Shakespeare performances under the stars. Central Park's impact goes beyond the screen and stage. It's inspired generations of artists, writers and musicians. From impressionist painters to contemporary photographers, Central Park is a constant muse. And the same goes for music. Countless songs capture its personality. From Gershwin's Manhattan to Simon and Garfunkel's The Only Living Boy in New York, Central Park's influence is undeniable. All right, folks, it's time to address the elephant in the park, or rather, the community that was erased to make way for this iconic green space. Yeah, Central Park's history ain't all sunshine and roses. Beneath its manicured lawns and picturesque bridges lies a story of displacement and injustice that's often overlooked. You see, before Central Park became a playground for the city's elite, 
This very land was home to a thriving African-American community known as Seneca Village. Founded in the 1820s, Seneca Village was a place where black families, fleeing the crowded and discriminatory conditions of Lower Manhattan, could purchase land, build homes, and create a better life for themselves and their children. Imagine this, a vibrant community of around 260 residents with their own churches, schools, and cemeteries, a testament to their resilience and determination to forge their own path in a society riddled with prejudice and inequality. But this dream, this haven they had carved out for themselves, wouldn't last. Now, as New York City's population boomed in the mid-19th century, the powers that be decided they needed a grand public park to rival those in Europe. And guess where they set their sights? Yep, right on top of Seneca Village. See, to those in power, this predominantly black community wasn't seen as a valuable part of the city's fabric. It was just an obstacle, a patch of land ripe for the taking. So in 1853, the city invoked the power of eminent domain, seizing the land from Seneca Village's residents many of whom had owned their property outright. Imagine the outrage, the heartbreak, the sheer injustice of it all. These families were uprooted from their homes, their community torn apart, all in the name of progress. And what's worse, the story of Seneca Village was largely forgotten, buried beneath the very park that replaced it. It wasn't until the 1990s that historians and archaeologists began to unearth the physical remnants of this lost community, piecing together the fragments of a story that had been silenced for far too long. The story of Seneca Village is a stark reminder that Central Park's history is not without its shadows, its moments of profound injustice. It's a story that forces us to confront the complexities of urban development, the lasting legacy of racism and inequality, and the importance of remembering those whose voices have been marginalized and erased. But it's also a story of resilience, of a community that, even in the face of adversity, built something meaningful and lasting. And while the physical structures of Seneca Village may be gone, its memory lives on, thanks to the tireless efforts of historians, archaeologists, and community activists who have fought to bring this story to light. Today, as we stroll through Central Park's verdant landscapes, let's not forget the sacrifices that were made, the injustices that were inflicted in the name of creating this iconic space. Let's honor the memory of Seneca Village by acknowledging its place in the park's history and by working to create a more just and equitable future for all. Because only by confronting the darkness can we truly appreciate the light. Maintaining 843 acres of prime Manhattan real estate ain't cheap. It's a constant battle against nature, wear and tear, and rogue pigeons. A dedicated team of unsung heroes works tirelessly behind the scenes. Gardeners tend to thousands of trees, shrubs, and flowers. Sanitation crews battle a never-ending tide of trash. Engineers keep bridges from crumbling and pathways free of potholes. The sheer scale of Central Park makes maintaining it a logistical nightmare. Now, let's talk about a darker chapter in Central Park's history, its struggles with crime and urban decay. See, in the 1970s and 80s, as New York City grappled with economic hardship and social unrest, Central Park became a symbol of the city's decline. Neglect, vandalism, and a spike in crime rates cast a long shadow over this once vibrant public space. The once bustling pathways became deserted after dark, the secluded areas havens for illicit activities. The fear of crime kept many New Yorkers away, further contributing to the park's downward spiral. It was a vicious cycle, a stark reminder that even the most idyllic spaces are not immune to the challenges faced by the cities they inhabit. But here's the thing about New Yorkers. They don't give up easily. In the 1980s, a group of concerned citizens, philanthropists and city officials came together with a radical idea to reclaim Central Park to restore it to its former glory. They formed the Central Park Conservancy, a private non-profit organization dedicated to managing and restoring the park. Okay, let's be real. Central Park is a victim of its own success. Everyone loves it, and that's a good thing, right? Well, not always. 
See, when you've got over 42 million visitors a year trampling through your meadows, picnicking on your lawns, and, let's be honest, occasionally using your bushes as a restroom, it takes a toll. We're talking about footpaths worn down to the dirt, lawns that look more like dust bowls than lush green spaces, and trees with roots exposed from too many people getting up close and personal. It's like that old saying, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. And in Central Park's case, too much love can lead to some serious wear and tear. And the environmental impact doesn't stop there. More people mean more trash, more air pollution from cars circling for parking, and more noise pollution disturbing the park's wildlife. It's a delicate balancing act, trying to provide a world-class recreational experience, while also protecting this precious green space from being loved to death. How do you solve a problem like overcrowding? You can't put a velvet rope around Central Park and start charging admission. This is a public park for everyone. Creative solutions are needed to mitigate the impact. One solution? Education. The Central Park Conservancy educates visitors about staying on pathways, packing out trash and respecting flora and fauna. They have volunteer programs for planting, cleanup and conservation. Encouraging sustainable transportation is key. The park has expanded bike lanes, improved pedestrian access and promoted public transportation. Walk or bike to the park, it's good for you and the environment. Now, after hearing about all the challenges Central Park faces, you might be thinking, damn, this park's got more baggage than a Kardashian family vacation. But before you start planning a memorial service for this urban oasis, hold your horses. Remember that scrappy little nonprofit we mentioned earlier, the Central Park Conservancy? Well, these folks are basically the park's guardian angels, fighting tooth and nail to keep this emerald gem shining bright. Formed in the 1980s, when Central Park was on the brink of collapse, the Conservancy has been instrumental in its remarkable turnaround. We're talking about raising hundreds of millions of dollars for restoration projects, implementing innovative conservation strategies, and perhaps most importantly, fostering a sense of collective responsibility for the park's well-being. They've got teams of horticulturalists meticulously tending to every blade of grass and every flower petal. They've got architects and engineers restoring historic structures and bridges to their former glory. And they've got educators and volunteers working tirelessly to connect New Yorkers and visitors with the park's natural wonders and inspire a new generation of stewards. But here's the thing about Central Park's revival. It's not just about throwing money at the problem, it's about people power. See, the Conservancy realized early on that the key to long-term sustainability was getting New Yorkers invested in the park's future. And boy did they succeed. Today, Central Park benefits from an army of dedicated volunteers who donate their time and energy to keep it clean, green, and thriving. We're talking about folks of all ages and backgrounds, from retirees with green thumbs to school kids eager to learn about nature, all united by a shared love for this urban oasis. And it's not just about picking up trash and planting trees, though that's definitely part of it. Community groups have adopted sections of the park, taking ownership of their maintenance and beautification. Local artists organize outdoor exhibitions and performances, adding to the park's vibrant cultural tapestry and residents advocate for policies that protect the park from development and ensure its accessibility for all. So there you have it, folks. Central Park, a glorious mess of contradictions, a testament to both human ambition and nature's resilience. It's a place where the ghosts of a displaced community mingle with the laughter of children playing frisbee. It's a reminder that even in the concrete jungle, nature finds a way. Central Park's story isn't a simple one, but it's a story that continues to unfold with each passing season, with each visitor who leaves their mark. Because in the end, Central Park is more than just a park, it's a reflection of ourselves.